Spears have got here just in the nick of time. What does that make us? Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? This is insurance adjuster, tractor operator, and tennis enthusiast, Rosalind Peterson. Rosalind Peterson is also unfortunately interested in chemtrails. I was going to do a full video on her rather tedious prison planet appearance, but I found that that was rather like watching paint dry, and so I decided to spare you. Her central point, Rosalind Peterson, shows us data in which she claims that chemtrails are being sprayed by military aircraft over her home in Mendocino County, California, and the two adjacent counties. Using a set of charts she claims to have obtained from her congressman, she shows that the contrails were not being left by commercial aircraft. In this image, she's indicating yellow tracks that show aircraft circling over Mendocino County and heading out over the Pacific only to return a short time later to again fly over Mendocino County. She concludes, therefore, that these flights must be military. As it turns out, that's a fairly logical conclusion. But then her argument goes completely off the rails. She cannot conceive of any reason why a military aircraft might be flying over that area, and therefore it must be there for some nefarious purpose, specifically spraying toxic chemicals. Let's examine this argument piece by piece. First, is there a plausible reason why military aircraft might be flying over Mendocino County? Madam Peterson here claims to be qualified to operate a tractor, but she's obviously not qualified to look at a map. Here I have overlaid the aeronautical sectional charts onto Google Earth. Mendocino appears at the top left. Notice the black pie-shaped lines overlying the area, which I will highlight. This is a MOA, or Military Operations Area. This is a region of protected airspace, notably clear of airline routes, as she notes, for the military to go and practice. In this case, it's associated with Beale Air Force Base, just north of Sacramento, California. Beale Air Force Base has an interesting history that explains many of her claims. Peterson, for example, claims that there's been a major change in the last decade or so in the frequency of these military flights. Is there a logical reason for this? In point of fact, there is. Beale is the home of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing, which operates the U-2 Dragon Lady spy plane, the T-38 Talon, and the new Global Hawk unmanned spy planes. Now what could have possibly have been going on in the last decade that could account for these increased flights of spy aircraft? Gee, let me think. However, even before that, during the late 1990s, nearby Mather Air Force Base closed, and its air refueling wing was transferred to Beale. This tanker squadron operates KC-135 tankers. Around that same time, KC-135s were given new, cleaner-burning engines that dramatically improved their performance. As I've explained in other videos, these cleaner-burning engines produce more water, which make them more likely to produce a contrail. When tankers fly, they often loiter in an area of flying long oval tracks waiting for their customers to find them. Aerial refueling is a difficult skill both for the tanker and for the customer, so it's not surprising that there's a great deal of practice required for such a delicate maneuver. But what about the mysterious flights heading out over the Pacific and returning? Well, take a look here and we see what is known as a warning area. This is a military operations area that exists over international airspace. M260 is close enough to appear in this chart, but there are others farther off the coast that can easily explain the flights going out over the Pacific. Her second major claim lies in a set of data which she claims shows spikes in polluting chemicals in the California drinking water supplies starting shortly after 1990. She then leaps to the conclusion that they must be from airplanes. That leap leads to a major face plant on her part. She isn't the only one who's noticed this problem with the drinking water. The EPA and the state of California did too, and they found the cause long before Ms. Peterson did. As outlined in this paper from the University of Iowa, in 1990, Congress passed an amendment to the Clean Air Act. In order to comply with the new federal air standards, California required oil companies to add a chemical called MTBE to their auto fuels. Shortly afterwards, MTBE-related pollution started showing up in the California watersheds. As a result, MTBE was phased out in favor of ethanol by 2006. This is the pollution Peterson found in her exhaustive search. 
The monster isn't in her skies, it's in her driveway. Moving on to a claim that I've heard from both Peterson and viewers in comments is that contrails are more frequent than they used to be and that are somehow different. As it turns out, there have been some definitive and exhaustive studies on the very subject done by NASA, the German government, and other scientific bodies, all pointing to the same conclusion. One of the best is this paper published by the Royal Meteorological Society International Journal of Climatology that was co-authored by several scientists at three major universities. The scientists used satellite images dating back to 1977 and compared them to more recent data through 2006. In this study, they found the frequency of contrails increased 118% over the time span. In that same period, commercial air traffic more than doubled as well. This indicates there has been a nearly direct relationship between the number of flights and the frequency of contrails. However, this left a 10-15% to 15 increase in contrails that the frequency alone did not account for. The German scientists found this answer to that in the cleaner burning engines as I've discussed in other videos. The scientists also looked into the question of persistent contrails, the main source of the chemtrail myth. As it turns out, they too are slightly more frequent than the doubling of air traffic would predict. However, scientists found a reason for this as well. It turns out that the data shows that the average temperature of the tropopause dropped by about 2 degrees Celsius in that same time period. This cooling exactly accounts for the rise in persistent contrails. The scientists did not speculate on what may be causing the change in the tropopause temperature. It may be linked to global climate change or it could have some other cause. I simply don't know. However, if we assume for the moment that it is linked to climate change, then that lends itself to some interesting speculation as to the motives behind the people who spread this particular conspiracy theory. For example, Alex Jones, the man behind Prison Planet, is known as a climate change denier. For such people, having a fantasy chemtrail conspiracy makes a convenient place to hide this potential evidence of global climate change. If I'm your mission, Shepard, best give it up. You're welcome on my boat. God ain't. <laughs>